Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost. We are very grateful for all those who are helping us with this service. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Heavenly God, you who sent your Son to give us life in all its fullness, we worship you. Lord, there is nothing that is too difficult for you. We trust you. God, please keep us strong and joyful in the knowledge that you are always with us and will protect us. May our belief and trust in you shine forth to others and be a testament of the joy we have in you. Father, help us to trust your guidance and put our faith in you. When we are not sure what to do or which way to go, you promise to guide us. You will not forsake us. Father, your guidance goes beyond the range of human reasoning. Gracious and loving Lord, help us understand more deeply still that though you are our creator, you are also our father and our friend. Father, in these difficult days, when time may weigh heavily on us, may we take time to be quiet alone with you, and, by doing so, feel closer to you and understand your will. Help us to be faithful to you in all we do. Please help us to trust your goodness, even when we can't see it. We rejoice in your goodness. Gracious Father, make us kinder, more self-denying, more like you. Teach us to give up our comforts for others. Make us kind in thought, word and deed. Teach us that it is better to give than to receive, to put others before ourselves. Dear Lord, forgive us when we so often see the bad and not the many blessings which you have given us. May we find joy in your everlasting love and remember that you are today what you have always been. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Today's Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 to 15, and Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 to 7. Genesis 18, 1 to 15. A son is promised to Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham at the sacred trees of Mamre. As Abraham was sitting at the entrance of his tent during the hottest part of the day, he looked up and saw three men standing there. As soon as he saw them, he ran out to meet them, bowing down with his face touching the ground. He said, Sirs, please do not pass by my home without stopping. I am here to serve you. Let me bring some water for you to wash your feet. You can rest here beneath this tree. I will also bring a bit of food. It will give you strength to continue your journey. You have honored me by coming to my home, so let me serve you. They replied, Thank you, we accept. Abraham hurried into the tent and said to Sarah, Quick, take a sack of your best flour and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and picked out a calf that was tender and fat and gave it to a servant who hurried to get it ready. He took some cream, some milk and the meat and set the food before the men. There under the tree he served them himself and they ate. They asked him, where is your wife Sarah? She is there in the tent, he answered. One of them said, nine months from now I will come back and your wife Sarah will have a son. Sarah was behind him at the door of the tent, listening. Abraham and Sarah were very old, and Sarah had stopped having her monthly periods. So Sarah laughed to herself and said, Now that I am old and worn out, can I still enjoy sex? And besides, my husband is old too. Then the Lord asked Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Can I really have a child when I am so old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? As I said, Nine months from now, I will return and Sarah will have a son. Because Sarah was afraid, she denied it. I didn't laugh, she said. Yes, you did, he replied. You laughed. Genesis 21 verses 1 to 7, the birth of Isaac. The Lord blessed Sarah as he had promised, and she became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham when he was old. The boy was born at the time God had said he would be born. Abraham named him Isaac, and when Isaac was eight years old, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded. Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. Sarah said, God has brought me joy and laughter. Everyone who hears about it will laugh with me. Then she said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The Gospel reading for today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35. And Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. Jesus has pity for the people. Jesus went round visiting all the towns and villages. He taught in the synagogues, preached the good news about the kingdom, and healed people with every kind of disease and sickness. Matthew 10 8. Heal the sick, bring the dead back to life, heal those who suffer from dreaded skin diseases, and drive out demons. You have received without paying, so give without being paid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Imagine you are back in time. Not a long time ago, just six months ago. Let's say December 2019. You are talking to three strangers on the street. And one of them says to you, in three months, all the shops will be closed and we will be in lockdown. And this lockdown will last for months. Not only 
your country will be in lockdown, but most of the countries around the world. Probably you will laugh. Perhaps you will not laugh out loud, as it would be unkind to laugh at someone's face, but probably you'd laugh at yourself. It's normal to laugh when we hear something that seems to be impossible. Laughter is a way of avoiding taking seriously some, something that seems to be difficult, odd, or unlikely. Sarah laughed to herself at the news that those strangers announced were at the same time difficult, odd, and unlikely. Sarah had gotten used to barrenness. Certainly she had struggled to accept her infertility, but now she got over it. When you get older and wiser, you realize that there are things you wish could be different, but you cannot do anything about it. And then you have to accept and move on. Sometimes you just try to laugh off your problems. Sarah had come to the point in her life where being childless was not a big issue anymore. However, she did not want to be reminded of the fact that she could not give her husband a child. She did not want to hear promises telling her she would get pregnant either. She knew that unrealistic expectations bring disappointment and frustration. In other words, laughter was a natural and normal reaction in that context. I think we could agree with Sarah's laughter at that point. However, but by laughing, Sarah was avoiding answering to the question that those men were putting to her. Is anything too hard for the Lord? For those strangers, Sarah's laughter was an act of unbelief rather than a mechanism to cope with hard situations. By laughing, Sarah was avoiding change. Laughter can be a way to avoid transformation, to stop trying, to avoid getting out of your comfort zone, if you like. In other words, it may be a strategy of unbelief. Faith, on the contrary, challenges us to look for change, to try to solve things out, to heal the wounds of past traumas, to dream of another world, of another life. If there is something that this pandemic is teaching us, is that the world can be different from what it was before. Everyone would say that it was unrealistic, even imagine that this government would pay the salaries of works in the private sector. Who would imagine that it's possible to do so many things from home? Who would even dream of reducing the traffic to the levels we had in the last month. I'm not saying that life under lockdown is better than life without restrictions, but I am saying that we need to use our imagination more. Is anything too hard for the Lord? As Church of Christ, we need to think of God's kingdom and try to imagine how the kingdom of God could look like in our context. But unfortunately, we were losing our capacity of dreaming of another world. Like Sarah, we got too used 
with our barrenness. We start to accept that the economy has the last word, that our solidarity was limited to trying to help the poorest people to survive, but that it was impossible to offer them a world where there is no poverty. Who would imagine that the death of a black man by a white police officer in the United States would generate protests from all over the world? Who would think that the whole concept of how we celebrate our past history would be challenged by one death in the United States? Many people are now realizing that indeed racism is part of our daily lives in the United Kingdom and that sadly we have gotten used to it. Sadly, it's a pandemic and a death of a poor Afro-American citizen that have shaken the world rather than the good news of God's kingdom. We were not able to challenge the structures of this world. We did not get the message across of a new world order, which we call the kingdom of God. The message of the gospel transformed the whole Roman empire and it can transform our current world. But we were failing to get this message over. Sometimes I think that like Sarah, we do not believe in ourselves. We do not recognize our capacity of generating new life and creating something new. Very often we laugh to ourselves and laugh at ourselves, but it's laughter of unbelief and commiseration. As Christians of the 21st century, we tend to look at ourselves as dispensable, perhaps with a beautiful past history, but without a future, with no fertility, no creativity, and no imagination. We have learned to laugh at ourselves. The strategy that we developed to keep our sanity in a world of unbelief was to laugh. Is anything too hard for the Lord? This question what we left unanswered. Nevertheless, there is a second moment of laughter in Sarah's history. She said, God has brought me joy and laughter. Everyone who hears about it will laugh with me. Here, she is not laughing to herself, afraid of admitting her laughter of unbelief. On the contrary, now she was inviting everyone to laugh with her to celebrate with her. Sarah discovered she was not dispensable. She realized she had a future, that her story would continue forward. She had learned to dream with those strangers, and now she saw her dreams coming through. Her story challenges us to laugh, laughter of joy and hope, rather than laughter of unbelief and pity. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Laughter is the end of sorrow and weeping. It's the way that we receive the promise of God's kingdom. 
It is the way that we celebrate together a world that we could not even believe to be possible. It is our strategy to work for a different kingdom, to imagine a new world where everyone can laugh together. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you today to give you our thoughts. We are very thankful for the life you have given us to live through the scriptures in which Jesus' teaching is most evident. Your life, Father, puts a deep joy in our hearts and a guidance of how to deal with situations in the world in which we live. We confess, although knowing your way, we have failed many times to live to the standards which you require. Father, as you can see, the world in which we are living is under attack by this killer virus. And how thankful we are for all the people from the medical world and other services along with the volunteers in all situations who are playing their part. Jesus sent out the disciples to heal people in all aspects of life. Father, we ask you to give us a new inspiration to copy the disciples. Father, help us to fight racism and religious bitterness as we have seen in the past and only two weeks ago when a man in America was a victim of racism and did not deserve to die. Lord, we pray for the families who have lost loved ones to the virus epidemic worldwide and also for the families who have in the past lost relatives and friends through bitterness and hate worldwide. Father, through the way you want us to live, help us to support our new pastor's clever as we start to build up the St Andrew's West Parish Church here in the centre of Glasgow. Help us as we use Christian teaching of the Holy Spirit to direct our lives and that of others. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility and self-control. Father, Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment of all? And he answered, love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. Jesus also said, the second most important commandment is like it. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. We ask, Father, that through these two commandments, you help us to work for the good of our fellowship and the people we meet in our lives. Father, we pray for the family of Betty McEwen, who recently died. We pray also for other members of our congregation who have recently been bereaved and for those who are ill at home or in hospital. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
May God make safe to you each step. May God make open to you each pass. May God make clear to you each road. And may he take you in the grasp of his own two hands. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. 